So a robot is something that senses, that thinks, and acts. And by some definitions, it has the capability to be programmed, or the ability to act semi-autonomously, or it can move in three or more axes. So perhaps your Audi is also a robot. And not just the fancy one that Will Smith drove in iRobot, the film. Yes, all modern cars are robots, or robot systems. But we call them cars, because we want them to behave like cars. We've had 50 years of Robotics 1.0, and we're just entering the Robotics 2.0 era. And Robotics 3.0 is still some distance away. So let's talk about Robotics 1.0. You might have heard of the three Ds, dull, dirty, and dangerous. Well, it's actually the four Ds, because these robots are also dumb, doing dumb tasks. So the four Ds of robotics are the sorts of robots we've had for 50 years. And you tend not to see them unless you work at a car factory, because they are locked away in factories or underground. But this is still a big business. The robotics 1.0 industry is worth $50 billion annual revenue if you count all the peripherals. The number of industrial robots in the world is doubling from 2010 to 2020. And these are the areas that you'll find robots in. The automotive industry, the consumer electronics industry, the dangerous materials handling, chemicals, metals, plastics, a little bit of food supply, a little bit of medical. And Robotics 2.0 is also qualitatively different, not just a different quantity. It's growing, and we measure it not by revenue, but by investment data, because many of these companies are so new that they don't have much revenue. So I call it the four S's of Robotics 2.0. They're smarter. Think of a smartphone or a tablet on wheels. They're full of sensors every car in particular, and sensors are getting cheaper and cheaper, and that makes them safer. They're able to navigate in the world around people better, and they do simple or single tasks. But usually when we talk about robots and factories, we talk about robots taking people's jobs. And then to add insult to injury, we talk about re-educating or upskilling those people. The focus on re-education I think is a little bit wrong. And in fact, every robot I've ever seen has needed at least two people to look after it, to find it when it gets lost, and to put it back on charge. So we're creating an entire new class of jobs. The robot wrangler, or robot assistant, or robot pilot. We can use robots using gaming technologies. And we can put it all together, like Creator, the fast food robot burger company, they said that they wanted to put all fast food workers out of a job. But what they mean is that they want to pay them more than minimum wage to supervise the robot and get study time as well, because the robot doesn't need that much assistance, but it still needs human supervision. One of the problems is that we have this false equivalence between humans and robots. And we understand that sign, but a robot system might have difficulty with it. We want self-driving cars because humans are bad drivers, and a lot of people die. Robots or robocars are safer, I'm certain. But the fatalities that will happen are different to the ones that would happen if humans were driving. And ethically speaking, or as a society, we find that harder to deal with because it's different. But what we need to consider is that most of the people that do drive trucks do it because they want to own their own truck. And it's the same thing with the taxi drivers that were being displaced by companies like Uber. They wanted their own taxi medallion that could provide them with income when they retired. And that's what it risk, is at risk. So we need to look more at the redistribution of capital rather than of labor. And one of the ways that we can identify Robotics 3.0 is through research grants. They're not real world. They're a long, long way away from revenue. They're not investable yet. 
they're definitely still in the future, but we can look at the shape of the future by looking at what research grants are out there. And there's a qualitative difference to Robotics 3.0 too, which is that it's about systems, going from a single stupid task or smart task to being a robot system. And that gives us the four M's of Robotics 3.0. Multitasking, multi-agent systems. They're also emotive, and by emotive, I don't mean that they're emotional. Robots and AI do not feel emotion, but they can act, they can act appropriately in response to human social interaction, and that's emotive. And they can morph, they can change shape, they can be flexible. I hope you take away the inspiration that I felt when I saw what we could do with sophisticated robot technology, landing on other planets and exploring them. And we have so many global challenges that I know we need these advanced technologies to solve. And what I see is the inspiration for the next generation of gamers and of dreamers who want to become robot pilots and I see robotics is offering us all the opportunity for the future. Thank you.